The Great Pyramid is as tall as a 40 storey building and as high as 20 stacked two storey houses. The original entrance was approximately 17 metres above ground level and led down a narrow tunnel of over 100 metres in length to the subterranean chamber. Another narrow tunnel leads upwards to the Grand Gallery and then to the King and Queen's Chambers. As the King's Chamber has a flat roof, it needs an array of spacer and load-bearing beams located above. Some estimate these beams to weigh as much as 80 metric tons. The two biggest mysteries are how did they reach the top of the pyramid and how did they raise 80 ton blocks to a height of 60 metres. A shallow ramp large enough to reach the top could require as much effort to construct as the pyramid itself. However, by using a steeper ramp, required material volume can be massively reduced. Comparing both ramps side by side, the 1 in 6 slope ramp requires approximately 4 times the manpower needs to construct as a 1 in 2 sloped ramp. The question then is, how practical is a steep ramp and how do you maintain a good footing? This problem can easily be rectified by using steps on each side of the ramp. It's not necessary for the men to ascend the ramp, as this requires extra energy. Once one block passes, the next rope can then be grabbed and the process continues. Using this technique, a 2.5 ton block can be raised every 3 minutes. It's also possible to use a downward pulling action, which will provide increased pulling force due to gravity assist. A low friction ramp design can be easily constructed using greased logs and guide rails. Although a steep ramp requires more force, this can be overcome by using extra men. As both ramps are the same height, the energy to overcome gravity is the same for both. A steep ramp is actually more efficient than a shallow ramp due to the reduced friction losses. Therefore, the steeper ramp results in a faster elevation rate of material using less men. Friction reduction measures are also more practical on a shorter and steeper ramp. However, the biggest advantage of a steeper ramp is the fact it can be easily internalised into the pyramid. This ramp can easily be enclosed during construction, resulting in a tunnel design similar to the Grand Gallery but without the need for a quality finish. Termination to the outer surface requires structural support. The most effective solution being an array of vaulted beams. Unlike the Grand Gallery, a simpler type of horizontal corbelling can be used to achieve structural support. Depending on pyramid size, the tunnel entrance can be at ground level or above. Based on the position of the chevrons, I estimate that the Great Pyramid had an internal ramp entrance at approximately 16 metres above ground level. Such a ramp from this entrance could then raise to a height of 85 metres in one single straight run. This, I believe, is the most logical explanation for the function of the chevrons. Some speculate that their purpose was to provide structural support to the entrance passageway. A narrow tunnel of one metre width does not need such support. As these beams could easily support a span of 3 metres, it's logical to assume they were used to support an opening which served as an entrance during construction. On completion of the pyramid, this entrance was blocked, leaving just the entrance to the descending passageway. The Great Pyramid originally had an external layer of white limestone casing stones, which concealed the chevrons. From this location, a ramp slope of 1 and 2 can reach a height of 85 metres and then U-turn to reach a total height of 115 metres, just 30 metres from the top. On completion of the pyramid, these entrances would be blocked, resulting in the following internal voids. With the casing stones now absent, a close examination of the stonework in these areas may identify such beams. Another anomaly is the fact the entrance tunnel and chevrons are off center by approximately 7 meters. The internal ramp with U turn would explain this as the upper platform needs to be on center. However, an internal ramp is not an ideal environment for raising 80 ton blocks. The following demonstrates a simple solution to this problem. Instead of building the pyramid in full courses, it's possible to maintain one side at a slope of 1 and 2, which then serves as the ramp. This requires an inner core construction technique which allows separate teams to focus on completion of the outer stonework. 
Once all the large blocks are placed, an entrance that will lead to the internal ramp can be constructed. There are a number of different techniques for raising blocks. As pyramid height increases, additional drag tracks can be added. As blocks arrive at the base, the ropes are transferred to the men on the ramp, effort is applied and the blocks move smoothly up the ramp. For massive blocks, a downward pulling action on the opposite face can be used. Using this technique, 1200 men should be adequate to raise an 80 ton block. However, another advantage of a steep ramp is the ability to incorporate large steps which can be used as a platform for raising blocks from one course to the next. A simple technique would be the rocking and jacking of these blocks in a seesaw-like manner. Once blocks reach the top, they are manoeuvred into position. This technique also eliminates the need for large amounts of rope. Using canals to float material to the base of the ramps would reduce manpower needs massively. It is possible to complete all the interior structures before external stormwork completion commences. It's also possible that the construction of both occurred in parallel. The inner core construction technique also benefits the chamber construction timelines. The Queen's Chamber could be completed within two years as opposed to eight, and the King's Chamber completed within five years as opposed to thirteen. This technique also allows flexibility to the final dimensions of the structure. Depending on resources and the health of the king, a decision can be made on the final pyramid size. This animation demonstrates the principle of construction utilising an internal ramp. Following is a proposed construction sequence for the Great Pyramid. Each step is 1 metre in height. Below ground, rocky outcrop and ramp details are not shown.
It may be possible to complete as much as 80% of the structure before the internal ramp needs to be enclosed.